My name is Dilip Lober and I'm Professor of Gastrointestinal Surgery at the University of Nottingham. For the next few minutes, I'm going to talk to you about perioperative fluid therapy. Fluid and electrolytes are probably the most commonly prescribed drug in hospital practice, and the provision of fluid and electrolytes is inseparable from that of nutrition. However, the knowledge and practice regarding fluid and electrolyte therapy has been poor, and this has often resulted in both an increased perioperative mor morbidity and mortality. Parenteral fluid therapy is usually prescribed to surgical patients who are unable to maintain an adequate oral intake. And it's important to realize the indications for parenteral fluid therapy. There are three broad indications, and they include resuscitation, maintenance, and replacement. For resuscitation, there is a deficit in the intravascular volume, and the main aim of fluid therapy is to fill the intravascular volume, maintain cardiac output, tissue perfusion, and oxygen delivery. Maintenance requirements are what most patients require, and that just amounts to the daily need of water and electrolytes, which amounts to between 25 and 35 mils per kg per day of water and one millimole per kg per day of sodium and potassium. Patients with intestinal fistulae are the typical examples of those who need replacement fluid therapy. And for these patients, you give them the baseline fluid therapy, the maintenance requirements, plus add like for like for what is being lost through the fistula. We must also remember that there is a dynamic interaction between the three indications for fluid therapy. For instance, a patient who has been adequately resuscitated moves over to maintenance requirement and no longer needs the large amount of fluid required for resuscitation. The aim of perioperative fluid therapy is to maintain a state of zero fluid balance because both fluid overload and underhydration are equally harmful for surgical recovery. It has been shown in many studies that when patients get fluid overloaded by about two and a half to three liters, they tend to develop edema, and edema causes increased complications and a prolonged hospital stay. Underhydration is equally harmful, and patients can uh, have problems because of underperfusion of tissues, uh, and so this should be avoided as well. So in summary, zero fluid balance is the key to good perioperative therapy. However, we must remember that sometimes fluid overload may be the inevitable consequence of uh, the resuscitation process. And when these patients go to the post-resuscitation phase, we must try to get rid of the salt and water they have accumulated in the resuscitation phase. So in summary, we need to give our patients the right amount of the right fluid at the right time. Thank you.